Good morning and welcome into another week. Hopefully you don't have a case of the Mondays, but this is a Monday edition of Miked Up here on Pittsburgh Sports Live and Pittsburgh Sports Now. I am Mike Osti and I am joined as always by my Mike counterpart, Mike Pakovacan. And this show is presented by Martin Lawn Services, Doug Martin's number there, 412-849-5894 for all your lawn care needs and really even beyond. They can put a patio on <laughs> together for you if need be. We're going to touch on the Pirates. They've been yeah. surprising. It has been, a, it has been a surprising last week and a half for the Pittsburgh Pirates as their offense has carried them through to – Winning, I believe now six out of eight, I believe, in that neighborhood. They were five out of seven before the weekend. And winning a series against the Milwaukee Brewers on the road, which was just an impossible feat, even when the team had a brief run of actually being good. And how that will be impacted by the return of Key Brian Hayes. You imagine that's a good thing, getting your best player back. But how will that change the lineup? Because the lineup has actually hit without him. And that has been a big reason why they have won. And we also may touch on a trade the Penguins made as they had an addition. It is Jeff Carter, a much aging, older player, but a player who's been there and done it before countless times. How will he help this team? Or is he not really going to give much of an impact to the Penguins who coming off a loss, but they've been certainly winning recently and are very much back in the division race. So Mike, to get things started here, first off, how was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend, man? Awesome, awesome. We had our first uh, first travel baseball game on uh, Sunday. Got up to Mars, Saw played that. With the ball, did yeah. well. So uh, we're uh, how'd your son do? Season. So it's fitting, and we uh, little fire out uh, Saturday night. I was jealous of that. Yeah, we have a fire yeah. pit too, but I, I didn't crank it up yet. Yeah, a couple couple beverages. So we're uh, we're ready to roll here. Awesome. How'd your how'd your son do? Did he have a, he have a he solid played, game? Yeah, he played well. Yeah, he uh, okay. Had a nice triple. Uh, oh, so nice. Went, okay. Yeah, went, yeah. The opposite, went, went the opposite field, and uh, I okay. thought it was going to be his first home run. But uh, we'll take the uh, we'll take the RBI triple. He got a got hit, got a walk. So uh, okay, he, he was on base a lot. Yeah, so that's that's a good thing there. The, everyone's going to like that. I test analytics. Everyone's going to love that. Getting on base is definitely a big factor. And you can tell him home runs will come. Triples are even more rare. So to have yeah. one of those in, in yeah. your stat sheet's almost even better. And that'll segue into your son clearly hitting right now. And the Pittsburgh Pirates have been hitting recently as well. It's led them to a chunk of victories. It's led them to a series victory. They've got quality starts every now and then from J.D. Brubacker. Not that often, though. Trevor Cahill not performing. Chad Cool not really giving you great start. Tyler Anderson has been okay. But it's been mostly thanks to the offense. And now, Key Brian Hayes, imagining, will be returning soon, as he's actually now been out longer than originally expected. And while this may change the lineup, Derek Shelton at least has the benefit of back-to-back -back series against American League teams on the road. So the DH is in play. How surprised have you been recently? Does this change in any way your thoughts for this season and how they're going to handle this year if they keep this up? And how would you get Key Brian Hayes back a part of this team when his absence has actually not hurt the lineup to this point? Well, uh, yes, I'm uh, very surprised. And I think, uh, you know, we should put this in perspective. Uh, the Pirates are right. still seven and nine. But sure. Sure. As you mentioned, they've won six out of the last eight games, and there's not a person – I can guarantee you that there's not a person I, – I don't know if there's someone in the Pirate organization. <laughs> they're they surprised, seven, too. Yeah, right. it'd be seven and nine after 16 games, and that's complete credit to the players. Right. Uh, not listening to all the doom and gloom. And Derek Shelton getting Derek the team – Derek Shelton, too, yes. Yeah, getting the team, getting the team ready. Um, seven wins, and like I said, it's – it is what it is, but I do know that it's more wins than teams like the Yankees, the Twins, the <laughs> Nationals, yeah. the Braves, the Cubs, Colorado, right. Arizona, who are all talked about and very well still can, could make the playoffs. Sure. But the Pirates are playing well, and we shouldn't uh, diminish it and say that, you know, okay, it's only April. Hey, it's April, and they're playing well. Right. Uh, credit – 
the, the uh, as you mentioned, the offense, I think it all goes with the middle of the order. Uh, Brian Reynolds is picking things up uh, from the three slot, and so is Colin Moran. That guy, since he's been here, has just been a um, – I, I, I think he fits almost in with the Stallings category as far as unassuming, um, quiet type guy, but just gets the he, – he's, he's getting the job done. He's gotten the job done since he's been here uh, from that trade uh, with Houston. And he – you know, ideally he's not a number four hitter, but on this team he is right now. And thanks to him yesterday and uh, for the past week, team continues to play well. And now they go into Detroit, a yeah. place that, uh, they, you know, they should be able to, you know, who knows. Um, but I'll take it right now, seven and nine. <laughs> I'm happy. I have no complaints with what uh, is going on, considering that they don't have their best player. Yeah, and honestly, again, because we talked earlier in the season about how do you even evaluate and, and can you even fairly criticize Derek Shelton this year because this was a season that they weren't really even expecting to win. This is year kind of one of this rebuilding process under Ben Charrington, and yet he has exceeded expectations. And even people who weren't going to criticize him and kind of give him this year as a mulligan with his first year being that pandemic season last year, the truncated year, and then really getting into it with a full season this year – and even less players than they had last year with Josh Bell now gone. This team has been well above water. This team has won. They've won a series. It took them forever to win a series last year with actually a better lineup in terms of names on that team. So all the credit to Derek Shelton, if somehow he would even get late 70s in terms of wins, I feel like he would deserve manager of the year consideration. Now, again, we're getting well ahead of ourselves here. They're 79. They deserve the the the, the – recognition right now but it very well could be that they're still going to finish in the 60s in terms of wins they still could finish in the bottom of the league the teams mm -hmm. you mentioned still could make the playoffs and their fans know that which is why they're upset the Yankee fans literally threw baseballs on the field and disrupted the game over the weekend that's how mad they are and the Milwaukee Brewers who they just beat were supposed to win the division and I believe they only have one more win than Pittsburgh and now have lost that series at home so you don't know if this is all going to change. It's still very early in the year. You normally can't gauge anything until mid-June, really, maybe even July. But way better than I would have thought now. And Hayes coming back, I actually threw the tweet up the other day that watch this team all of a sudden lose when Hayes returns after winning without him. That would just be the pirate way to do things. Wouldn't shock me if that still occurs. But – at least Derek Shell is not going to have to worry about how to tinker the lineup right now because he does have the DH in play, Detroit, Minnesota, and Detroit playing better than maybe some would have thought, Minnesota not. But I would imagine Phil Evans would go to the DH spot and then Key Brian Hayes could come into the lineup at third and probably hit second. You don't have to worry about it too much right now. Talking to, to some people that, you know, watch the team closely, cover the team on the postgame shows for PSL, it seems like the most belief is outside of these American League series when they have the DH in play that maybe Reynolds moves to center. Maybe that's how you configure the lineup. What are your thoughts after you deal with these American League teams with the DH in play, assuming Key Brian Hayes comes back during one of those series and don't have to worry about it right then? After that's over, how would you configure the lineup with Hayes back? Well, uh, the, the first thing is that nobody uh, – thought was a possibility was that they have to keep Philip Evans. Yeah, they do have to. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, you earn playing time by results on the field. And that guy has been there, uh, aside from maybe Moran, he's been their most productive hitter all season. So you, right. you, you can't ask a guy to produce. And when he does, you take him out of the lineup. When you're the Pirates, <laughs> right. you don't have, you know, you don't have the hitters. You got to keep the hitters in uh, that are producing for you. And he does. So, you just have to – the good thing for about him is he's a guy that I, I believe has the versatility to play a bunch of positions. And I think that, that that'll benefit uh, him and Shelton and the Pirates. I, I think he has to go one of the corner positions. Um, Hayes has to play third. I think Eric Gonzalez is making a case to um, at least – if not get more playing time than Kevin Newman, at least make it a, a, a split during the week. Right. Uh, Kevin Newman uh, was hitting six or 700 in spring training and just hasn't been able to produce that or, or replicate that in the regular season. And Gonzalez, when he gets in there, 
uh, like the yesterday, two more hits. Um, he has yeah, two, to find two for five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think that's a decision that uh, Shelton's going to have to keep an eye on. He's just going to have to go with a hot hand. Frazier, of course, is going to play second. Moran first. Stallings. But um, I, I think one of the center fielders have to sit. Fowler and Alford just, uh, you know, if not get rid of the, one of the two uh, to the minors, uh, right. you know, they probably shouldn't be here. Uh, Reynolds needs to move over. Polanco is going to play. And uh, whatever position, I guess, that means Evans that has to go to left field. I, I think that has to be your yeah. lineup once you get back to the National League. I don't, I don't think there's any, there's any other uh, choice. There really isn't because number one order of business, I don't care if you're trying to win this year or not. And honestly, to be real, it's great that there are seven and nine to this point winning this year and somehow being 500 this year probably wouldn't even be the best thing for the rebuilding process of this franchise. They probably want to get as great of a draft pick as they can. It doesn't really matter if they would make the playoffs, but of course winning is certainly helping this team at this point and staying in the race could help mature this team. But Phil Evans has hit really since he's been with the Pirates, even going back to last year. So he has to, that's your first order of business. You have to find a way to have him in this lineup. I don't care where he plays defensively. Yes, you will lose something defensively, but it, it got to be the outfield if it can't be third base, I would figure, because it's not going to be first. And you're looking at left or right. So you're probably looking at left. Polanco can't play. Polanco can't play left, right, yeah. And, and I think the conversation's different than it was even when Key Brian Hayes originally got hurt and you decided to use Evans instead of Todd Frazier because not only is Evans hitting, but to be fair, because as much as he is a punching bag for everyone, and myself included, Polanco's hitting better now than he was. He actually has been making contact. He hit a home run on Friday night. Polanco's actually moved his average up as crazy as this sounds, to 182. He did go 0 for 5, though, on Sunday. But still, with $11 million as a price tag, trying to get value for him, he's that player you're going to likely trade at the deadline if he does perform. you got to have him in there to at least try when he is hitting. So I think that's probably what happens. Obviously, you want to have Hayes back. Obviously, you figure you're better with Hayes. Um, I will say that no matter what this offense does or no matter what you do offensively, even they're this, eventually they're not going to be able to win games without enough starters going deep in games. That's how they're going to dip back to, to where they normally are and come down to earth. Right. Yes. JD Brubacker goes six innings the other day. Tyler Anderson goes four or five regularly, but unless you move Chad cool out of the rotation, then I don't know who you put in there. You just have three out of the five pitchers that are, are leaving the game after the third inning, the bullpen cannot carry you too far. The offense can't expect it to pick that up either eventually that's just going to be a problem. I would even consider, and I actually said this on one of the postgame shows, I would consider moving JT Brubacker into the number one spot in the rotation and moving Chad Poole down to the four or five and switch it around just because he's been, his ERA is below two. He's been, he's, he's been pitching so well, he should almost get national recognition. But we'll see when Hayes returns, how he plays, how healthy he is, and they do have the comfort of back-to-back -back series against American League teams on the road. Yeah, I think that that potentially could be huge um, if the the other guys continue to start hitting. If you have right. Frazier and and then Hayes is hitting two. Yeah, Frazier hitting three oh five. Yeah. yeah, and then you have Reynolds at three, Moran four, and you could put uh, Reynolds has been Evans, the best player. Yeah. yeah, Evans who's hitting well, or Philip Evans at five, and 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 instead of you know what they're doing right now. It, that could, that could be just huge. That they need to keep on. Hopefully, uh, you know right. the wrist is and everything is okay. But this team is just short with. They, they need another outfielder. Um, uh, e e even Polanco, they, they need another option out there. Yeah, Alfer, William Defoe, Fowler, none of yeah, them. those guys just aren't doing it. And you know, I don't know if they're going to pull somebody up. Uh, I, I would pull somebody up from the uh, uh, the taxi squad. Yeah. Or look to look to find somebody else because those guys just aren't doing it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the pitching, the, the key to the pitching though, Mike, is they need Mitch Keller. He has to start giving them something. Uh, right. Yeah. That guy has to be able to go all year. Uh, there should be no zero consideration given to not uh, skipping a turn or a fake injury or anything like that. The guy has to get the ball every five days. 
and we have to know by the end of the year whether or not he's a guy that um, is part of the rotation. It's nice for Cool and Brubaker and those guys to do well, but if this team is ever going to, uh, you know, take right. that next step or move up, guys that they draft and develop like Keller have to produce in the majors and not just at Triple sure. A. Sure, and that's also why is why it's been so important that. Ryan Reynolds has performed this year unlike he did last year. You need to have those key pieces a part of your team and to show it. To also be fair, this is just a caution out there. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve the spot. He definitely does, and he's definitely been hitting great all year. Phil Evans did bring himself down from 326 as an average before the weekend all the way to 275. He's only had one hit, I believe, in the last three days. So he's cooling off a little. So. Yes. Yeah, so that's fair that if he if he would go three or four more games with only one hit and goes one for his next 12, then maybe you're thinking, is that an aberration these first three weeks? He has yeah. hit, he has had power, but again, his, his average, which looks okay at 275, was almost 330 three days ago. So he has yeah, really come to, down. Yeah. yeah, they have to just ride, uh, as I've been saying, uh, I've been pretty consistent about it. You just ride him because he, he's obviously not a 300 hitter. No, uh, no. If he has power and hits 275 or 280 all year, yeah. that's perfectly fine. And the bullpen actually has been and better than maybe some would have thought. Howard in particular. I told you off the air, is a little joke there. Howard seems like the only man in Pittsburgh who works more than Alan Saunders. Every day, How, Howard's out there. The only day Howard had not pitched in the last two weeks was Friday, and it was a game that just basically – meant nothing or maybe it was Saturday but one of those two days but Howard every night he goes no days off for Howard like Allen and this bullpen's been okay Bernard, Bernard has been great uh the Morris product so you figure the offense is not going to be why this team's held back but you eventually figure the pitching maybe even the bullpen will eventually be a problem and eventually come to roost Mike up here Mike Vakovic and Mike Osti here presented by Martin Lawn Services and Mike, as we just close things up, the Penguins yeah, the did Penguins. make a trade. Yeah, the Penguins, uh, despite the, it was a disappointing loss yesterday to the Sabres. Sabres are a really bad team. They are. Yeah. And I know they play on back days, but, you know, you know, who knows if those two points are going to become uh, important to lose. We'll see how things play out at the end of the year. But right. uh, we, we haven't touched upon this. Uh, the trade deadline, the only deal – that they made was acquiring a, a veteran guy like they did last year. Uh, Jeff yeah. Carter, pick him up. My question to you is, um, is he going to be provided anything more than Patrick Marleau? Uh, little similarities. Uh, yeah. Guys, uh, great careers, veteran leadership guys. Marleau came here and, you know, uh, right. <laughs> I, I don't know that he contributed to anything. Right. You, you believe that's going to be the case with uh, uh, Jeff Carter, or are they going to get more from him? I think based on that bar, which is pretty low, Patrick Marlowe didn't provide anywhere near as much as the Penguins had hoped for. And for a little aside, for a trivia question, anyone out there for bar trivia, if anyone asks you, the man who has the record for the most NHL games played, it is now Patrick Marlowe, no longer mm -hmm. Gordie Howe, actually set that record the other day incredible i feel like nobody is going to guess that any further what a weird record for him to have congrats to him but it, it's nothing to be impressed with during his penguin tenure he's back to the sharks now i think jeff carter is going to give you more than patrick marlowe gave you for sure I, I don't think he's going to all of a sudden be any dominating force or be anybody that can pick up production with malkin hurt or anything like that they're so definitely going to need malkin back for a playoff run, but Jeff Carter is a two-time cup champion. He's been around the block. He almost always is on teams that go deep in the postseason. Uh, so he's kind of a good luck charm too. He knows how to play playoff hockey. Yes, he's older. No, he's not as good as he used to be, but I think he's going to be really motivated to be with this team. And I know some said that about Marlowe too, but I think Carter's going to fit in more. I think he, he's going to fit in more with these guys. I think he's going to fit in more for playoff hockey. And I do think he's going to have somewhat of an impact I do find it interesting, though, because when Ron Hextall took this job and Jim Rutherford resigned, many were upset with Jim Rutherford for making moves so much about right now and trading away draft picks for the future, and this team kind of might have problems in the future. It wasn't me. I, get, I got what he was doing, and it was successful, but some thought that. And everyone loved Ron Hextall being here, and I agree with the hire, but he made the same move. Ron Hextall hired – Bringing in Jeff Carter, Mike, and you just brought up the comparison to Patrick Marlowe and 
yeah. even maybe Jerome McGinley before that, even though he's a Hall of Famer. It's a very typical Penguin trade. When they, did, they had, didn't have enough to make a splash, there was nothing crazy going on in this year. That's the Jim Rutherford trade. So it's interesting how Ron Hextel's not getting venom because you would assume that anybody mad at Jim Rutherford for trading away draft picks for veterans to win now all the time would hate that move by Ron Hextel because that does give up draft picks, a future, uh, you know, I think third or fourth. So it, 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 yeah, it could be a, could be as high as a second, depending. Yeah, it on could which. be a second if they go to the Cup final. Yeah, it would turn into a second if they go to the Cup final, and and once you get to second or third, I mean, those can be impact players. They've got impact players on this roster through that last fifteen years, from the second, third, and fourth round, of course, the first round. So it could be a big deal, but it almost tells me the Penguins have started playing well enough that they showed Ron Hextel how well they're playing even without Melkin. We got to try now. We can't quit on this year. There's something here. Maybe we can go for it one more time. That's why you add a veteran piece in. I, I like the move, but, of course, if they flame out in the first round, people are going to say it was for naught, which it would be. They have to win a series for this to mean something. Right. Uh, I don't think he's going to be giving you game-winning goals or, or hat tricks in both seasons, but I think he's going to play critical ice time. And I think he'll do it on at least the third line. So as long as he's on at least the third line, I think that's an impact. He's not going to move down to the fourth like they've had to do with some other veterans who couldn't really get it done when they come over. So I don't mind the move, but it's very much a Jim Rutherford move. So it is interesting how Ron Hextel's not yet been criticized because there are people that hated those moves from Rutherford. Very similar move by Ron Hextel. And it tells me that he thinks this team can, can get it done. And – Obviously, they got to play better than they did against Buffalo, but you're not going to win every game, and they're right back in the race. And once Malkin gets healthy, you got to feel like they're better and at least have better goaltending than some other teams out there. So we'll see. I don't mind the move at all, but it could be a problem for the future if that does turn into a second-round pick. That then would probably be a lot to give up for Jeff Carter. But yeah, this, then uh, they'll be in the cup final. So yeah, This Eastern Conference is just too hard. Anyone that says they know what's going to happen, you just never right. know. Yeah, game. everyone thought Boston was going to be a slam dunk, and they've been struggling, and, and the Capitals, they, they're looking really, really good, but maybe they're vulnerable in the postseason, not goaltending. So you just don't know, and oddly, a lot of teams that the Penguins have had trouble with look to be more of a favorable matchup now. But Jeff Carter is usually on a good team, usually on a team that goes deep in the playoffs. He has that experience. He has more deep playoff experience than, say, Patrick Marlowe or even Aginla had, so maybe that also helps him. I think it'll be better than some recent veteran additions, and he's already had some quality quality minutes to this point. So, But it could be a lot. If they get to the cup final, it's a second-round pick. That'll be a problem. But, hey, people are probably not going to be complaining well, if they're in the cup that. final then. Yeah, then they're in the cup yeah, final. So. I was going to say, you're right. I mean, they'll throw away a second-round pick if they're playing in the Stanley Cup finals. So. Exactly, yeah, because that wasn't the left. thought process coming in. Yeah, 11 games left, three games this week with, uh, with New Jersey. So we'll see what uh, – uh, Dan Kingerski and the guys over at uh, Pittsburgh Hockey now will definitely. Uh, sure. It, it's just weird. The, the playoffs are sneaking up on us. 11 games left. We're in the May, and it's uh, yeah. the hockey, playoff hockey is going to be here before we know it. Yeah, it is sneaking up on us, but at least we're going to have it back to where it kind of normally is. We're not going to have playoff hockey in, in the fall. We're going to have playoff hockey into the early summer, late spring. It's going to be similar when there's nothing else going on. You'll at least have playoff hockey. So, yeah, playoff hockey is one of those entertaining <laughs> moments in sports. So get excited for that for sure. Yeah, Pittsburgh Hockey now over for that coverage. And also we'll have some Penguin postgame shows coming up here on Pittsburgh Sports Live. That does it for our Monday edition of the show. Hope you don't have a case of the Mondays, but check out our sites either way for all our coverage and all our news and analysis throughout the day and beyond. Keep it here for more of these shows throughout the week. For Mike Fakovacan, I'm Mike Osti. For all of us here throughout the network, and of course, Martin Lawn Services, where you can find them at 412-849-5894. Have a good day, guys.